Hi guys. So the purpose of this video is to show you uh, how color works a little bit and how pigments and how the different paints are actually different than each other um, in terms of how much you pay for them and uh, their consistency and those kinds of things. So because I gave you two lists, two supply lists, I, this is just a, my chance to kind of give you a really good sense of why I uh, recommended what I recommended and in order to maybe help inform some other decisions if you want to spend a little bit more money on other paints or not or what's worth what. So what I'm going to start with is the budget paints. I'm going to say right now that I tend to not paint with the budget paints unless I am um, when I when I prepped for doing the art battle the 20 minute painting battle I did a lot of paintings in the cheaper stuff because I I really well I, was, I, I failed a lot <laughs> and so I didn't want to spend a lot of money on my paint knowing that I wasn't going to be doing a great job um, as I was trying to figure out uh, what I could paint in 20 minutes so I'm starting with the budget stuff and I'll show you what I've got here I uh, this is the artist loft brand which is the brand the name brand from Michaels and it's cheap and Michaels always has stuff on fair, on sale it's not necessarily cheaper than anything else, but um, Michael's is always a fun um, place to check out. This is the Liquitex Basics, which I talk about in the supply list. Uh, just a really good all-around uh, full body, heavy-bodied acrylic. And then I've got the um, Sennelier, which I'm probably not saying I, that's a very French um, word. Uh, this is the um, abstract acrylic. This is primary red and then I put down a brilliant blue and their primary yellow just like in the list. The red is the most to me that well the, hmm, the red is the most important because reds can run yellow or they can run cool they can run blue and depending on how you mix them and what you want, you really want to pay attention to uh, which way this red is going. So, and reds are usually the hardest ones to tell what's going on with the red. Like, is it going, you don't maybe not notice it right away. So this one, this primary red is pretty neutral, which means that if I mix it at all, it's gonna, it's not gonna surprise me. I have another red here that I'll show probably later on. This is called, um, Nafetal red. It's a little orange and then the it's just, just a different game when it's a warmer red. So you definitely want to, especially with red, pay attention to the primary. Um, blue, not so much. I got a brilliant blue which is kind of the same as primary blue and I'll start with those. So these are really heavy bodied which means I'll put some on my they're nice and buttery, Ooh, like that, do you see that? So they're nice and buttery, and they generally pretty good, like you can, you can cover a lot with a nice buttery kind of basic red like this. And I'll add some yellow to that. Yellows in the cheaper ones tend to be a little bit more transparent. I'm actually mixing it, right, with the red. Yellows tend to be a little bit more transparent when they're cheaper, meaning you usually have to use more um, layers to cover something. Okay? They're just a, uh, they're just not as strong as some of the other ones. Okay? So that's yellow. And I've got a blue here. Let me get a different brush. Here's your blue, and it's nice, brilliant blue, just really, really basic. You see that? And if I start to mix it with the yellow, in fact, I should probably mix more yellow. It'll turn green, okay? So I can get the rainbow out of those three colors, the red, yellow, and blue, and I can even get a purple out of this. Purple's a little um, trickier to mix, but... There we go, there's a nice purple. 
So that's why the primaries in any are good because you can make a rainbow out of them, right? And that's why you want the, uh, the color wheel. The color wheel will help you mix colors and tell you how they work, how you can mix them together to create colors if you don't know it by heart already, like I do. <laughs> so, so that's great. So you can, you know, if you're really, really budget, I still have plastic on this. Um, if you're really, really budget, this is really all you need is a little bit of the primaries and then the white and the, um, the white will just allow you to get a nice, you know, um, shading or uh, you can lighten up the colors with the white and of course the black allows you to take anything like the yellow and turn it into a more interesting yellow or a more interesting gray do you see that so that's you can do everything with these colors you have to maybe have to work a little bit harder there's a gray right in there between the black and the white you might have to work a little bit harder to get to the colors that you want. Um, but if you're just having fun with colors, like this is totally a great place to start, right? Like this is, and you're kind of worried about money, start here, get a pack of brushes and start going, right? Okay, so definitely you want those. That's why you want them. Then we have some other cool colors like that are a little harder to get to. This is Quinacridone Magenta. It's always a favorite in my classes. People are always, reach for this color somewhere between a purple and a red and again that's a basics color so it's really um it's really uh there it is purple red pink kind of color kind of hard to mix but um fun anyway so that's a good color if you're adding to your palette here's another one that's really tricky to mix I mean, all my, I mean, in theory, you can mix a lot of colors, but this one's going to be hard. This one's bright aqua green. Again, another super popular color people like to turn to because it's just got this wonderful pop about it. Um, let's, get you, let's get you a nice clean brush so you can see it like that. People really like that color in every, in every go, in every kind of color. Okay, we have a nice light blue. This is cerulean, and it's also a really fun kind of sky blue to work with, like that. You could probably add some blue and white together to get something similar, but that gets you there a lot quicker. And then there's um, the thalo. I want to show you thalo because thalo is a lot different in the more expensive colors than um, than. Uh, than the cheaper, but it's still a good color. And look, you can see how transparent it is. You see how it kind of, you can see through to the, to the, uh, the canvas on that one. So yeah, so those are good ones. Um, just because they have a little bit more character, a little harder to mix. And if you really want to go crazy, try metallic, right? This is the gold. Again, another really popular one to play with because it's just fun. There's your gold, and it's just kind of shiny and cool looking like that. It's just really fun. And so I would recommend that, too. I do also, aha, uh -huh, here it is. No, but that's not. I do also recommend playing with the, the uh, fluorescent colors, going out and seeing what's in the fluorescent, because this is a golden one, so it's a little bit more expensive. But there's lots of cheap ones out there that you can play with as well. And they're kind of fun because what happens with these colors, sometimes they shift, they dry, and then they don't quite look like what you wanted before. Sometimes they get a little bit muddier. And I find that when you're working with the cheaper paints, some of the fluorescents are a good substitute if you really want a brilliant look, right? So, so go check out some of those uh, fluorescent ones too if you're on a budget because it could just add a pop too, okay? All right, so those are the cheap ones. Let me reset my palette and I'll be right back with um, the, uh, the little bit more expensive ones. Okay. Okay. So I have my palette all clear now and I'm going to go over some of the more expensive paints. The golden paints is what I pretty much only paint with when it comes to the expensive paints. Uh, the quality is really good and they just seem to be available everywhere. Um, and so that's why the, and with a good variety in a lot of places. 
Uh, professional quality in Liquitex or Winsor & Newton is also really good. They just don't tend to be as available where I am. And I also like the, uh, the variety of consistencies that you can get. So those are the reasons why I like golden. Uh, and this is, I'm gonna start with this color here. This is green gold, golden. The color's up here at the top. One of the things to take note is that on the bottle, it on this tube, it tells you the, the transparency of this. So this is an example right here of how transparent it is. See how you can see the black through it? That means it's pretty transparent. So that means you can do nice glazing. You can put this green color on top of other colors and it'll sort of, you'll see the other color or the, or what you've, um, what you've written or what you've painted underneath it, unless you maybe add a little titanium white and then it'll change a little bit and then it'll be more opaque. Okay, so that's, uh, you can always see that right there. So it won't be a surprise. And green gold, super fun color. It looks um, really, it's just a really wonderful green. It's almost luminous the way that it paints. Uh, I can't find it in any other color. It's a very good earth color like that. I mean, I can't find it in the cheaper brands. You just can't find it. So that's green gold and it's really fun to work with. Uh, you can kind of see how it, let me see, how it glazes a little bit over this gold too. You can still see underneath it, see that? And a lot of the, actually a lot of the paints have some kind of transparency. Okay. The next one that I'm going to show you, one of my favorite colors too, is sap green. This one's still transparent. It's still, it's really dark. So you can see, you can, you, you don't see as much through it but it's actually transparent, it's kind of weird. So this is just another good one if you're looking for um, to, for painting trees and stuff like that. It's just really dark green and very earthy, very evergreen. When you compare it to that rich green that we started with, these are really way more earth tones. Green's a good place to start for painting landscapes, okay? Uh, next color, oh my gosh, everybody loves this color. This one's cobalt teal or teal. Uh, I even love this color. That's why my mine looks like this. And it's kind of like this one here that I was showing you. So I'll paint it next to it. But it's a little bit truer in terms of its blue. And it just really pops, nice, beautiful sky blue. These three colors are great for the sky. Blue, 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 blue. This is teal. Isn't that fun? Okay, what's this next one? The next one is Prussian Blue. And I really love this one because I like it as a substitute for black. If I don't want something super, super black, Prussian Blue is a really good place to go because it's super close to black, but it's really, really dark, kind of midnighty color. And um, oh, here it is. I'll show it to you. There's your blue. So nice and rich. If I put more layers down, it'll get closer and closer to black here. Okay. Let's look at some cadmiums. So the cadmiums are um, really, really, let's see, let's see if I can show it. Here we go. Um, they're really bright and they're not the best for your, um, they're carcinogenic. So you need to be careful about getting them, eating them, don't eat them. Um, some people don't like to get them on your hands. You can wear gloves if you like to paint with your hands. And, um, but they're just like, they're almost irreplaceable in how rich in, um, in, the, in the warm tones, in the oranges and yellows that you can get with this one. So they're really thick too. There it is. And I'll paint it up here so you can see. It's pretty, it's just a really rich, almost red, but orange. Orange, 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 orange. Okay, cadmium. I'll say too, like sometimes the color doesn't look like that much different, but um, some of it's also the experience, right? The experience of painting with a, 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 a more expensive paint can just feel easier to paint with. This one's cadmium light yellow. The cadmiums run through the yellows, like I said. So this is a super, it's almost fluorescent. It's, and I like it for the fact that it's almost fluorescent. Here, like this. Lovely. Okay, speaking of fluorescent, here's fluorescent yellow and golden. Let's take a look at the difference there. I'll try a different 
Okay, this is just a jar of heavy body. And ooh, see, you can tell the difference right away. Whereas I would say a fluorescent in this is gonna be more like that first color. Don't quite hit it as hard um, with the yellows like this one does. And uh, speaking of fun colors, the one that's not, the one that's not, this one is Luminous Red in Holbin. And it's a rich, heavy bodied color that I really love. It's basically fluorescent, kind of um, pinky orange, something like that. So good for highlights, really interesting to mix with. It's a good color too. So that um, that's just kind of off golden for sure. Golden doesn't make anything like this. So this is a really fun color to play with too. All right, so those are your heavy bodied, right? So that gives you a sense. They're not that much different than the cheaper ones at all. Um, and the reason why when I put that supply list out, I said, why don't you try with some of the other um, types of colors? So like this, this is the high flow. I like the high tend to like the heavy body and the high flow. High flow, um, like it sounds, it's a high flow. And this is the cool paint that you can make like all the drippy effects with, which you can you definitely see me using in videos and other people using in videos. Um, you can use the drippy kind of quality about it. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, there we go. Like that, and it'll just drip. You can also lie it flat and see what happens when you mix the colors. But I like to just kind of spray it sometimes and just let the drips do what they want to do. And so that's, um, that's funny. That's fun. This is thalo, thalo blue. Thalos are really rich, bright colors that have this um, interesting luminosity. You see how they kind of, um, they kind of, I don't know, it's just really bright. It's just a really bright, beautiful blue. Uh, quinacridone um, va um, magenta, which is this color in the cheaper one. This is also high flow. And let's just see what happens when you compare it. I'll just put it right here too. Okay. And you can kind of see, it's just a little bit more opaque, a little stronger. You probably have to put down a few more layers of the cheaper stuff to get to that really, that depth. And that's the truth. Like anytime you use something a little bit more expensive, you're probably in the paint area, probably gonna use less of it. I mean, I definitely, when I set up my palette, I put down less of the, the more expensive stuff because I knew that I wouldn't use as much of it and it would last longer. So, so that's the, uh, that's the high flow. Here's another one. This is the thalo green. Thalo again, remember, has this luminosity to it. This is a green um, as well. This. There it goes. Like that. Okay. It's kind of interesting what it's doing with the uh, fluorescent, isn't it? Now I'm starting to paint. <laughs> Okay, all right, so that gives you a sense. So like I said, the other thing that you can do with that is you can lay it flat in, you know, like this, and you can just let, kind of let, not gravity, but water just kind of swirl around on it a little bit and see what it does to maybe push it around, play with it that way. That's a totally no another way to play with high flow. I like to do that too. Okay. All right. the the last The last kind of um, consistency is this uh, is this um, fluid acrylic. That's just called fluid. So this is not like butter. It's a little bit more. I said it, I think I said smoothie. You can see that's what it looks like on my finger. And it's this is gold. Okay. Like that way more opaque than the other gold, the cheaper gold. And it just you, puts a nice thin layer down, okay? So what's really nice about that is there's no texture, right? So if you're looking for something just really thin, you don't want it to be gloppy, you don't want any texture at all, then these ones, these fluid acrylics, are a really good one for you to kind of maybe start with or play with. But it's actually kind of fun to just play with all of them and see and play and see what you like. I've definitely run the gamut. I've moved through all these different kinds of 
paints and their consistency from the heavy body to the to the high flow to the fluid and even the open acrylics which are another story and what I find is as I'm experimenting and playing different ones are sort of calling me at different times so it's nice to have a variety uh, but again you don't need the variety you can just do the five colors the primary color is white and black and you can do so much with those too you can have so much fun with those just mixing and seeing what you can do with those this is just a whole big broader perspective on all the wonders, wonderful supplies out there. I hope that I answered at least a little bit of your question about what the difference is between all these different paints and give you a sense of maybe some colors that you wanna pick up. All right, get painting. Can't wait to see what you do.